Okay, a 66 Super Reverb just came in. Um, the owner was complaining that the reverb was cutting out. That was just some loose and dirty RCA plugs. Um, he also had very loose speaker hardware. I tightened all that up, tightened up the cabinet. And then I played it for a little bit. And the noise floor is just higher than I'd like. And he asked me to take a look and to make sure it doesn't need anything. So 66, 66, 66 here. Got some JJs. Sometimes these get microphonic in uh, hang down uh, combos, we'll find out. Um, so all the new tubes here for the rectifier and power tubes. It's got some old, original or just very old period correct preamp tubes, any one of which or combination of which could be the high noise floor. Look in the doghouse. Okay, this could also be it. It's got some IC brand caps here. I think I've made my feelings about those clear. Uh, they don't last. They're not reliable. And uh, they're only about 50 cents less expensive than a high quality FMT. And as you can see here, whoever did this uh, just twisted the new leads to the old ones. That's not very reliable. There's nothing holding them in place beyond that. Um, so I'm going to recommend it gets a full recap. Um, I'm not going to push it for right now. I did not detect anything that was, uh, ne necessarily a bad filter cap, but, uh, I would not be surprised if these are going to contribute to it and they may fail next week or next year, but they're not going to be working five years from now. I'll tell you that. Let's go to the insides. Okay. The hardware, uh, Grounds that I've mentioned a lot. Uh, bias cap's been changed out. Nothing fantastic there, but nothing problematic in itself. All the pots seem original. Just, uh, had all the cathode bypass caps changed out. That's good. Everything looks very clean. Uh, overall, it's got the original one watt screen grids here in the output tubes. Those always benefit from being replaced uh, just because they're, they're only one watt and they're mounted right over the, the hottest part uh, where the heat comes out of those output tubes. And these things just bake these old carbon comps. That's inexpensive to change. Power cable is safe, not the best job. Let's take a look down here. I can't, uh, I can't do this upside down very easily, but I will tell you that this is not done to safety code because they fuse the neutral and switch the hot and you want to have the fuse on the hot fuse and then switch on the hot. So I'll talk to the owner about that. But the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that these old tubes aren't noisy and that there's no DC on the board. Even a very clean board like this can't have DC leakage, you'll find out. And, uh, you know, it's from 1966. Some of these 54-year-old plate uh, resistors may be bad. Sometimes these ceramic disc caps uh, begin to let out the magic. So, I don't see anything drastic. I'll report back once I find the, the source of that higher noise floor. And it's just kind of a, a white noise hiss that should not be there at low volumes. All right, let's chase noises in this Super Reverb from 66. I've got all the tubes pulled except the uh, uh, rectifier, the power tubes, and the phase inverter. If I move the phase inverter tube, I get a lot of ugly sounds. So let's see if it's the tube or the socket or if they're both just dirty. Now, the one that's in there is an old GE. And it's possible that the tube socket is just dirty. Let's put in this new old stock uh, National uh, JAN-1287. All right, with a different uh, AT7, that noise is gone. So let's try putting the tubes back a channel at a time. This is one of the uh, GE 12VX7s that came with the amp. The reason I'm starting with V1 is the normal channel only uses that one tube. So it just has V1 in the phase inverter. That's all there is to it. Let's take that out 
and see if a different 12x7 is quiet there. Here's a mollard reissue. It's passing signal. No noise. All right, so we've got two noisy old tubes that came with the amp. Let's put in V4 and V2 and see how the reverb channel is doing. Again, these are the old GEs. Wait for signal to pass. All right, there's that noise floor I was telling you about. It seemed a little high. All right, so yeah, I'm not feeling any of these old tubes as being particularly trustworthy or good. Um, so a new tube does not make noise in the old sockets. The old tubes make horrible noises. So I'm going to uh, stop this and clean the tube sockets and clean the preamp tube pins on the old tubes and see if we can get any use out of them or if it's time to get all new preamp tubes. All right, I cleaned the tube sockets and I got a couple of packs of Chesterfields out of each one. And I cleaned the tube pins, which um, had a white oxide, especially down at the very tip where it makes the, mo makes the most contact with the uh, sockets. Uh, they've been in there a long time, so you had dissimilar metal reactions. And that terrible static has gone from all of them, though some of them, primarily V2 and V4, are extraordinarily microphonic. I've got one of the GEs in V5. Let me put that in V2 and see if it's quiet. Because if it's a good tube, it's a really nice sounding tube, typically. And if I can uh, put some GEs in V1 and V2, um, almost doesn't matter what's in V5 as long as it's uh, strong enough to drive the vibrato. V4 is critical, but not as critical as V1 and V2, so. All right, V4 is the most microphonic. V1 is still pretty microphonic. V2, not too bad as far as old stock tubes go, but not great. V4 has got to be changed out, so I'm gonna take that out. And uh, let's put some current production tubes in V4 and V5 for now. And we'll sort out some really good ones later. These are some that are on the bench. Uh, let's see if they're any good for test purposes. But it's nice to know that the AT7, for the phase inverter at least, is good. And I think the one in V1 for the normal channel is going to be good enough. Come on, go in there. All right. All right, uh, given that most people play the uh, vibrato channel more than the normal channel, we put the tube that was in V1, which is seemingly better, in V2 for the vibrato channel. And I'll put the one back in V1 for the normal channel and see if the microphonics follow the tube. Now, it's staying with that socket socket needs to be cleaned a little bit more. Yeah, those are quite nice. Or maybe that tube doesn't like that socket. That's not too bad. It's the owner's decision if he wants to keep these older, slightly microphonic tubes, or whether he wants reliable new ones, which aren't... Uh, as valuable on the market, but sure make for a quieter amp in most cases. Well, let's see how the channels are sounding now as far as the noise floor goes. And if I find the channels are too noisy with those old tubes, and we'll put some new ones in, regardless of the collector's market. All right, hear that click when I put that in. Not so bad now. I need to clean uh, the contacts on that jack. So.
camera. That, that bright switch needs to be cleaned. Sounds really anemic. Not getting a huge range of change from that normal channel bass pot. Treble's working fine. So I need to look back at that channel. Um, not happy. The noise floor is good, but I'm not happy with that bass response. What's up with that? We'll find out. Moving on to the vibrato channel. There is low end. That switch needs to be cleaned a little bit, but the noise floor is much better than it was. Still not what I would consider perfect. But infinitely better than before. Let's see if that vibrato is working. sound all that great but part of it's going to be because the roach is exposed to the light on the bench let me put a cover on that <laughs> once it's all enclosed back in the dark. Um, one of the reasons uh, that the uh, speed is not tracking with uh, with the speed control, you'll hear it, the vibrato stop and catch up with itself as I turn it up. It's because there's a 22 microfarad cap there on that cathode, which is on the schematic, but it's not what Fender used in a lot of amps. Most amps have a, a five microfarad, 4.7. the uh, speed control track with the pot more accurately but there's no clicking or thudding so I'm gonna call that pretty healthy um, so uh, where we're at now is uh, all the <laughs> noise is gone the noise floor, floor overall is lowered I'm pretty sure it come down even more with some more uh, preamp tube replacements. I'll talk to the owner about how quiet he wants it, how well he wants it to perform versus how, quote, vintage. But before that, I need to see what's up with the bass control on this circuit here. And maybe that that cap's not happy. All right, so sleuthing got the uh, normal channel working r right in terms of the bass pot. Um, I don't know whether there's a snippet of wire in here, or whether somebody used some lead-free solder that had developed a tin whisker, but uh, plug one of the treble pot read as 147 ohms from ground. So all that's cleaned out and working now. Bright switches need to be cleaned a little bit. That's easy to do. Just a little bit of deoxid in there. And it kicks out the cobwebs. V2 
these two are still wanting to get ugly. I might have put the wrong one in back in there when I was playing around with it. But uh, I really do think that aside from the AT7s, V1, V2, and V4 need to be changed out for some uh, tongue saw reissues or something. Just because these old ones are older than I am and feeling it. That yucky noise is gone, but this one seems like so. So that's on the vibrato channel. Still a little bit of yuckiness and very microphonic, so yeah. I'm afraid that uh, he needs four new 12VX7s. Uh, such is life. The amp otherwise is working really well and uh, almost all the noise floor that I was hearing when I first powered it up is gone. Uh, so I think as far as repairs go, this is a fairly easy one and it's nice to have that channel working right. <laughs> Super Reverbs. <laughs> 